Hello and welcome to our 19th edition of FSI Fridays. I'm Edwin live in Boston, joined by Johansson and Charlotte. Hey, Johansson, happy Friday. What do we have lined up today? Happy Friday, Edwin. Today we're going to hear from our Surface team as they've been really busy the last several months. We'll have an opportunity to talk about new devices, including the Surface Duo, and how it's creating more efficient paths to productivity. Next, we'll talk about the typical financial services organization's use cases and examples and how it can enhance both the experience for the frontline worker and their clients. Third, we'll talk about FSI organizations and how they can get started with app development in this new dual screen format. Then we'll wrap it up today on FSI Fridays. <music> Those of you watching live or on YouTube, as a quick reminder, we'll spend the initial part of today's session on today's topic and the last moments to address any burning questions. So please use the Q&A window and we'll monitor during the presentation. If you're watching the recording, feel free to use the comments below to ask your questions. So let's go ahead and get started and meet the presenters for today. Joe Hansen, who's our special guest this week? Thanks, Edwin. So we're honored to be joined by five guests today, a first for an FSI Friday session. Um, but let's start with the first two speakers, Jonathan and Faison. Uh, so Jonathan, let's start with you. Thanks for being on the show today. Can you tell our audience what your role is at Microsoft and what your typical day looks like? Um, <laughs> as the audience knows, we like to do fun facts about our guests. So what's something people might be surprised to know about you? Yeah, of course. Thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan Lickis. Uh, in the Surface team, my role is a product manager, uh, and I get to work across all of our products in the portfolio, uh, really focusing on demos. Um, so I had to think about a fun fact, but the only story that came to mind for me is uh, I was once bitten by a lion. Uh, this is because I was doing some volunteer work in South Africa a few years ago. And uh, yeah, so I had to go off and get a rabies shot pretty quickly. That was the, uh, the, the most surprising thing that I could come up to think of. Um, normally, before the pandemic, I'd spend a lot of time traveling, going around events, meeting customers, uh, going to some of the announce events that we do. Um, and more recently, of course, working from home increasingly um, more. So just finding ways to take breaks during the day uh, and move around a little bit. Thanks for having me. Uh, you got it. So, uh, Jonathan, I saw that show Tiger King. Are you going to be having your own show, Lion King? Uh -huh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, I don't think so, Edwin. Um, All right, we'll work that on that. experience I don't want to repeat. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah. Faisal, can you tell us your role at MS uh, at Microsoft? And and for your fun fact, I hear you had to ask your wife for for a fun fact. What did she come up with? So uh, my role, so Faisal Makiwal, really great to be here. Appreciate being able to be on FSI Fridays. It feels like a fantastic thing that happens every so often that you guys are putting on. Uh, my role at Microsoft uh, is a product marketing manager, similar to Jonathan. Uh, I lead all of our product marketing for Surface Duo. But I did have to ask my wife uh, a fun fact because, of course, she's the boss um, and she knows everything. And the fun fact that she told me to remind everybody is that I do have a, uh, actually at one point in time, I had three lawyers on retainer to deal with speeding tickets uh, in two different states. This is a true fact. Um, you might say, you might say that I have a little bit of a need for speed every so often. So thanks, Faison. We'll, we'll be sure to make sure that uh, you're going at the right speed in this session for today. Um, so Faison, you're, you're on the Surface team. I'm sure you've been extremely busy. We've seen so many new products being announced uh, over the last couple of months. And overall, Surface has grown a bunch over the years. Can you talk about where the portfolio is at the current moment? Yeah, it's really great. The, the, the Surface portfolio has grown considerably over the last few years. We just launched the all new Surface Laptop Go and the new additions to the Surface Pro X, which we're really excited about. Um, but it's clear that from uh, with our Surface lineup, we have been working hard to deliver even more choice for our customers and to help reach new audiences looking for the right level of innovation and performance for what they want to accomplish. The Surface portfolio features brilliant touch screens, great battery life, and adapts to how you want to work and even your own organizational style. But we want to deliver even more choice to our customers while meeting people where they are and continuing to innovate. Why don't we go ahead and roll the next uh, clip.
As you kind of think about the innovation that's come through on the surface line, and you just saw a little bit of a clip that went through a number of our products in our portfolio, surfaces continue to introduce and expand entire categories of devices to drive new user experiences. Uh, with the category that we're going to be talking about today, and that's just a little bit of a teaser that you're seeing on screen, we're meeting people where they are working. Um, and it's clear that increasingly the places in which we are getting things done from a work perspective, from a life perspective, has become more and more dynamic as we go on. At Surface, it's really about how we bring the software and the hardware together. And ideally, the hardware fades into the background and you don't think about the tool you were using, just that you're getting done what you're trying to accomplish. And this is where this new category shines, allowing our customers to get the jobs or expectations of the work done they haven't been able to accomplish fully with the devices that are available today. If we think about kind of the micro moments um, around uh, what we're experiencing today, which is definitely on the next slide, uh, we can feel uh, it's really important that we feel connected, uh, that we feel responsive, um, that we feel the ability to be collaborative. Um, and what happens is there's a there's a real point in time where people struggle to stay productive on their current devices that are single screen devices. And the reality is too, even right now while we're talking, we've got multiple monitors going and you increase in productivity when you have multiple screens. It's just the way it is today. And we're really excited about kind of bringing this into a form factor that fits in your pocket. Based on, I mean, uh, it's that, that's super exciting and that uh, music actually makes me feel like I'm it's Friday night. So, um, but I'm always looking for a tool set or devices that help me be more efficient throughout the day to help me get my work done quicker. So personally, I've had two cell phones for the past couple of years. One is for work, one is for personal. Uh, I got my duo a month ago and I've started to notice when I go back to my single screen device, it's, it's the small things that start to really stand out to make a difference. So for example, if I do like a simple copy paste operation between apps, I have to go to one app, double tap, copy, find the other app tap and then paste again right so what used to be a pretty standard and a normal thing like copy paste now it seems to be a bit more of an annoyance on a single screen uh quite frankly so i assume it's things like this that make the surface do attractive for those that like to multitask and save time i mean it really does add up yeah it's really great like you mentioned you've got those micro moments you're trying to be uh, connected responsive collaborative right you're also attempting to make sure that you can be productive in some ways. And that constant app switching that you just talked about, Edwin, is what you're trying to hack your way through the devices you're using today. But what if we could just bring a new experience that provides you to be able to be more productive at the same time? You know, Faison, you know, I've I've got my Surface Duo in front of me right now. And, you know, this this device is just change the way that I've worked and the way I interact, um, you know, with a mobile device. And, you know, we've got our financial services focused audience here today who may not have been exposed to this reimagined way of interacting with this device. Can you help set the stage on what this device is and, and why we released it? Yeah, absolutely. So the Surface Duo is entirely new. It's, it's like nothing else on the market today. It's purpose built for mobile productivity. There are two screens connected by a revolutionary 360 degree hinge that allows the device to, for you to be able to use the device in a number of different ways that you just couldn't imagine with a device that could fit in your pocket previously. Um, it brings together the most productive apps on the planet with Microsoft 365 the, and the world of Android apps in the Google Play Store without any limitation. Yeah, you know, Faison, so what are the most important things we need to know about this really new device? That was a great question, Edwin. The Really, it starts off with kind of the room to focus. So being able to open and view different apps on each screen to easily reference and compare content. And you essentially say goodbye to that constant app switching that you were talking about before. Um, we also, being able to bring the fact that we have these two screens, we bring together this fantastic experience around drag and drop. So you can effortlessly move images, text files, 
and more between apps that you can so you can get more things done quicker. And there's incredible new app experiences. So with our enhanced apps, you're going to see your favorite apps in a new light. With a dual enhanced apps, simply you drag the app to the center and they intelligently make use of each of the screens in a completely unique way like you're seeing on screen with, with Outlook. And then lastly, what you're going to see is that we have the ability to create your favorite app combos and we call these app groups. It's the ability to launch any two apps side by side with an easy touch of a shortcut that you can personalize, making sure it's the way that you want to work on the device. So, hey, Faisal, you know, one of the things that I love most about this device is, is really that a 360 degree hinge. Can you talk to us about the ways that, that people can actually use it? Yeah. At the end of the day, like you've experienced, Johansson, it's one device with multiple postures. It effortlessly move from one thing to the next, thanks to that revolutionary 360 degree hinge. It enables the multiple postures for the device that you're seeing on screen. Uh, there are 56 micro cables, each thinner than a human hair, that enables that seamless integration between the two screens. But you can do things like hold the device like a book and view apps side by side or span the apps like we talked about, or even just read a book. Uh, or you can take notes and draw it right naturally with a Surface Slim Pen. But at the, end of, at the end of the day, you have more real estate for viewing, experiencing websites, apps, photos, uh, organizational applications that you might need, and you can make a phone call, fold it back to make a phone call or use the device in a single screen mode. And then lastly, you can lean in to collaborate and take, take a hands-free Microsoft Teams video call and prop the device in tent mode. Number of postures just enabling you the way that you want to work with the device that fits in your pocket. Phase on. I mean, this is super exciting. Um, you know, Microsoft has been known to have phones in the past, and there's still people I run into that miss their Windows phone. But what's different about this one, and what's so important that everyone should know? That's a great question as well, Edwin. I think at the end of the day, the big things or the big rocks that people should understand is one, we've got the most powerful productivity apps right at your fingertips, built right into the device, right out of the box. So things like Outlook, Edge, OneNote, and lots more that come through with Microsoft 365. Plus you get the Microsoft launcher, so you can feed, jump right in. You're gonna see that in a little bit in terms of what that looks like. Um, but we also have all of your Android apps that you're looking for. So all your favorite apps, the ones that you use every day to be productive, all in the Google Play Store, ready to use, no limitations to how and what you can use with them. It has Android OS, and so Surface Duo runs on Android, and it's the most used mobile OS on the planet, so you get that familiarity of being able to use the device right out the gate. And then lastly, when you have the device and you're working like we are from home or other locations, you have the ability to connect to your Windows 10 PC with your phone, and you have a great experience there without missing anything that's going on between work or life or being just productive on a number of different ways. It's really great to get an overview and understand the vision of this device. Uh, I mean, you know, from your perspective, I really love my Surface Duo and, you know, the way it comes together and, you know, you really got to see it in action to be able to kind of really be, understand it. Um, so Jonathan, can you do us a favor and bring this uh, scenario around Surface Duo um, to life for our audience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see my screen, if not now, very shortly. Um, but this is the beautiful Surface Duo coming to you uh, from me live at home, uh, quite literally handling it. Um, this, this hardware, when people pick it up or see you with it, um, they always want to know and ask what it is. It's just phenomenally beautiful. When it's unfolded, it's just 4.8 millimeters thin when unfolded uh, and just a tiny bit larger than a single screen footprint today. Uh, it's only 250 grams, so super lightweight. And that hinge that Faison was talking about earlier, like it's so engineered with craftsmanship. There's no wobble whatsoever as I'm using and holding the device with one screen.
Um, and then the screens themselves, hopefully you can see it OK here, but, you know, phenomenal quality and brightness and vivid colours in both of these displays. Uh, 5.6 inches each in this beautiful three by two aspect ratio to really maximise all of the content that you're going to be able to look at. And of course, with built in security, as Faisal mentioned, as soon as you're ready to sign in, you just tap your finger on the side of the device and you're ready to explore. I mean, Jonathan, I can't believe how thin uh, this is. I know when people buy new phones, they also want to know that they can use it right away and not have to massively learn to use something new. How steep of a learning curve is this? Yeah, we've built on our history with Windows and of course, um, you know, leveraged Android as well to make this an extremely familiar um, experience for people. And you can even see that if you fold the device back and are using it in a very familiar single screen mode, it behaves just as people would expect an Android device to behave today. But of course, opening it up, you have the familiar home screen with all of your app icons. Uh, you can easily pull down from the top or bottom of either screen to bring up your quick actions or notifications. Um, and then, of course, you know, doing things like swiping up from the bottom on either screen will bring up your full app list. Uh, and as Faisal mentioned, um, of course, all of the apps available from the Google Play Store. So you can see I chose a few finance related ones here that I use quite often. Uh, didn't want to go any more specific than that because I know that we might have some of these customers on the phone with us today. And it's so great to see that we paid so much attention to the software as well as the hardware. Can you give us some examples and scenarios that you use every day? And you know, these are some scenarios that I use as well that'll be applicable to our financial services customers that really come to life with Duo because of this dual screen form factor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll show you a few of my favorites. Um, so scrolling over to the left hand side, we actually have this thing called the Microsoft 365 feed that gives you all of the, the things that you kind of just need to get access to quickly as like your hub for information. So here I can see that, you know, maybe I'm a wealth advisor and I'm joining a call with a, uh, you know, prospective client to walk them um, through a plan. Um, I can easily join that meeting from there. Um, you can see I'm not Adrian in this case. This is me joining you from my uh, from my other screen. But you know, at the same time as I'm now in this Teams meeting on one uh, on one of my screens of Surface Duo, I of course can have the full Teams app open on the other screen, so I can quickly navigate around the Teams I'm part of, the chats, etc. But the thing that I use the most is going into PowerPoint to be able to pull up a presentation. And so imagine again that I am that wealth, um, uh, you know, wealth manager, uh, wealth manager doing a consultation. Uh, I can now be making face to face contact with the person that I'm talking to without losing context from the PowerPoint information that I need to share. And as Faisal mentioned, one of the benefits of dual screens as well is that if I want to view this PowerPoint in a little bit more depth, I can actually take the PowerPoint app, span it across both screens, even turn my device into a posture called dual landscape. And now with these three by two aspect ratio displays, I can not only see a main PowerPoint slide in great fidelity, but I can also see a slide sorter view so I can quickly jump around to what I want to show a prospective customer. Um, and again, because of this picture in picture Teams window that hopefully you can see down here, I can still keep that face to face interaction uh, with the person that I'm talking to. Uh, next up, the other thing that I particularly like doing while I'm in uh, Teams calls, as an example, um, is using OneNote to take notes. And so again, it's incredible that with the thinness of this device, it also supports pen. And so, you know, here I have the Surface Slim Pen uh, and, you know, just wanting to take notes. I'll just write a quick message saying hello to you there. Uh, I can do that. And of course, turning the pen around and using the eraser works just as you would expect it to. Phenomenal for not having to take notes on pen and paper, you know, with the prospect of you losing those. Uh, all digital notes, of course, still giving you that natural note taking experience, but it's so much more secure than pen and paper. And then just finally, I'm actually going to leave this 
uh, leave this meeting. Um, I'm sure that even with the proliferation of new tools like Teams and chat, uh, many of us still rely on our email inboxes. And so, you know, let's let's think about, um, you know, maybe uh, I'm a, a, a retail bank branch manager um, or maybe I'm, uh, you know, an executive within the financial institution. You know, maybe there's um, some videos I need to watch at the moment. And, I, and I'm not sure if you saw that. I'm actually going to do it again to make sure I can call it home. But, you know, here I've pulled up an email. Um, it has a link to a, a video that somebody's asking me to watch. And normally, as soon as you click on this link, it would take over what you're doing and take you out of that context of maybe what it's asking you to look at. As I tap the hyperlink here, though, you can actually see the video opens on the other side of the window. And now, again, thanks to the 360 degree hinge and the versatility of this device, you know, I can be watching this briefing from the, the Fed that maybe I want to keep up to date on, put the device down onto a table or my countertop in my kitchen um, and use it, uh, you know, hands free. Uh, and then just finally, Faisal mentioned this, but it's one of my all time favorite features. So let's just take a look at that um, is, of course, drag and drop to stay super productive instead of having to worry about copy and pasting information. And so if I load up uh, my OneNote file, let's say that I keep a to do list, I can now really easily select some text from my email that has an action in it, drag that across. And it's copying and pasting as simple as that to keep track of all of my to do list. What do you think? Jonathan, I mean, this is, you know, these are scenarios that I actually seriously do every single day. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, I just sit on my couch and rather than have my kind of dual screen monitor set up, I've taken calls and taken notes, um, you know, with my clients. It's just really changed the way I think about a mobile device. and. You know, I've done this on the road as well, right? Um, so really fantastic demos and, and scenarios in here. These are really compelling experiences. So um, same thing, you know, I, I'm just always learning something new that helps me save some time. Um, but I know a lot of our financial services customers have looked at or deployed phones as thin clients. Is this a scenario Surface Duo can support? Yeah, absolutely. Um, here, what I did just to, you know, save a little bit of time was uh, pulled up the remote desktop application um, that's available in the Android store. Um, I've signed into a Windows virtual desktop session uh, and you can see that I'm now in a Windows PC environment. Here's my start menu. Um, you can see in settings that this has actually got uh, 128 gigabytes of RAM. And, you know, down here I've got an Edge browser window pulled up with, you know, a Power BI dashboard that might have some sensitive customer information in it. So really important from a security perspective and access um, to data. Um, and so, yeah, we support it. Um, and the other thing that really brings this to life as well is, of, of course, I can take this remote desktop app um, and span it across both screens easily. Um, you do still have the scene down the middle of the screen here, but if I now stop sharing my video and move over to sharing my screen, um, this is now using the Your Phone app in order to project my screen uh, from my Surface Duo using um, Miracast. You could also do this to a TV that you have or plug it in via USB-C to a, a monitor or external video source. And now you can see that scene goes away. And with Android support for keyboards and for uh, mouse input as well, you really now have a, um, a super compelling thin client solution with Surface Duo. Thanks, Jonathan, for, for so much of these hands-on demos. I think it you know, really started to show our audience you know, how these things can come to life. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was security and, you know, for our financial services customers, security is, you know, very top of mind. Um, and so could you talk to us a little bit around how um, Surface Duo actually achieves uh, some of that security posture for our financial services customers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hopefully you're seeing a slide uh, here that contains quite a lot of detail around um, our enterprise security story for Surface Duo. Um, we really think about um, the security story as being from chip in the silicon all the way out to when the data needs to you know, be transferred 
uh, transited from the device to whatever service it's going to hit. And so one of the investments that we made with Surface Duo is to actually use a tried and tested UEFI that we as Microsoft have built ourselves. This allows us to mitigate against source level attacks uh, because we're not using anything from third parties. Um, it also means that now across you know, um, software that is provided from Google, but it's our responsibility to maintain and update um, in the operating system all the way to the firmware level uh, UEFI um, code, we completely own that as Microsoft. And so we just a couple of weeks ago pushed out our first update for Surface Duo. Um, and, you know, we were able to deliver on that update extremely quickly, which we know is a concern for some of our customers. Um, so I won't talk through everything here. Feel free to ask questions in the chat window. Um, but you can see all the way from that, you know, chip firmware, through the operating system, all the way through to the apps and how we protect the data within the apps. Um, these are all of the fundamental things that are built into every single duo. Um, but one thing I did just want to touch on as well is, of course, you can always extensify the, um, the built-in security uh, with a range of different management options. Um, and so as the next slide builds, what you'll see is that Surface Duo is able to support a vast range of fl flexible management options. Um, whether you have um, more BYOD devices, whether you have a standards list that's able to be uh, used in a choose your own device model, um, all the way up to devices that you own and purchase and deploy in the corporate liable model. And the great thing is, 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 of course, as well as great support from uh, Intune, the uh, Microsoft first party uh, MDM solution, we also support over a hundred other EMM solution providers out there um, to manage Duo um, in so many different flexible ways. I mean, thanks, Faison, first of all, for helping us understand the vision of this device. And Jonathan, for that great demo, bringing the Surface Duo to life. I mean, I love that Windows, you know, uh, WVD scenario. I'm going to start playing around uh, with it right after this call. Um, but let's go ahead and shift to our, uh, you know, focus on our FSI scenarios. We're fortunate to have Jason and Isaiah who work with uh, financial services customers uh, talking to all things Surface. So Jason, let's go ahead and start with you. What's your role at Microsoft? And I hear you were in the running to have your own HG TV show? <laughs> That's funny, Edwin. So I'm, I'm a Surface specialist focusing on our financial services, services customers, uh, your HG TV thing. Like, no, but uh, one thing about me is I am a licensed home builder. My wife and I have built a number of homes in our local area, and we've actually lived in over 10 homes just since I've been at Microsoft. So uh, that's probably something interesting about me. No, very cool. I'm going to have you come over uh, when things are over, and uh, I'll have you build an addition for us. So I appreciate it. Um, so Jason, can you help us understand the landscape of Surface and financial services and set the stage by telling us what you're seeing tre uh, trending post-COVID? Yeah, I think the you know the most common theme is obviously people kind of branching out from their normal everyday office experience. And what we're seeing across financial services and our insurance customers as well is that people are looking for ways to take take their business outside of their their current building, outside of their home. How are they meeting customers where they're at? And Surface Duo really helps them to securely do that in a way that's efficient so they can meet their customers in, in their own places of work, in their own environments, and meet the needs of, of whatever it is they're trying to do. Thanks, Jason. Um, so Isaiah, thanks for joining us as well. Um, we hear Halloween's around the corner and the spirit of Halloween lives strongly in you. Um, what's your go-to costume? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely one of my favorite uh, movies of all time is definitely Black Panther. You know, rest in power to Chadwick Boseman. But my go-to, costume it has to be Eric Killmonger. So, you know, I braid up my hair, you know, I trim up the beard and, you know, I go to town and it gets a lot of looks. Thanks, Isaiah. You know, I love Halloween as well. Um, so I know that you work with financial services customers as a Surface specialist um, where they could leverage not only other Surface devices, but specifically Duo in both front office and back office. Can you talk to our audience about some of the most common scenarios uh, that they can relate to in terms of how they may leverage Surface Duo? Right. So circling back to Jason's 
point earlier, more and more we are hearing from our financial services customers that there is a need to meet their customers and clients where they are, you know, get away from the branch and move away from, you know, the brick and mortar locations. You know, in this first scenario, a customer is at a sporting event, college or department store, and there's a pop-up kiosk for a credit card application. As the customer is going through the application, there's a lot of flipping back and forth on a single screen, you know, not a very smooth process. Yeah, Isaiah, you know, when you put it in that way, um, it just doesn't sound as smooth as it could be uh, on a single screen. So where can the Surface Duo enhance both the bankers and customers experience in this dual screen uh, method? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why Surface Duo is extremely pivotal right now. It, it can empower your bankers, insurance agents, wealth advisors, and many more of your first line workers to do just that, meet your customers where they are. With this unique set of features, Surface Duo helps them stay in their flow while delivering incredibly engaging and efficient experiences. So in this first scenario, we wanted to exhibit that. And this workflow, you know, this workflow is for a banker that's signing up for clients for credit cards at a remote location. You know, again, this could be at a college campus, sporting event, or any other marketing event. You know, after the banker builds value for the credit card, and you know, this could be from swiping through content on the Surface Duo, to complete the process, the camera can be used on the device to grab basic information from the customer. The banker then pivots to book mode to review the credit card agreement with the customer on the left screen, and then finishes with the customer signing with the Surface Slim Pin on the right screen. You know, that, that's a very common scenario, Isaiah. I've seen it all the time walking into malls when I used to walk into malls. But, you know, when you think about just across the financial services spectrum, this kind of dual screen device experience, think about like a hedge fund and maybe, you know, I know myself looking at stocks and portfolio and news information, I'm able to kind of use this dual screen experience. But going back to this specific experience, you know, sometimes this may be a mortgage specialist where you need to maybe bring somebody else into the conversation. And I can see this kind of back and forth on a single screen experience may not be, you know, ideal. So could you talk to us about the scenarios again, where the single screen, dual screen experience and maybe bringing somebody into a call? Yeah, absolutely. So this scenario is an offshoot of the flow we discussed earlier. So, however, you know, let's say that the banker is reviewing a mortgage contract with their client, still using the monitor to turn and show the ins and outs of the contract. However, in this case, you know, something's quite not resonating with the client. The banker has an idea, you know, to bring in another team member, a loan specialist. The banker turns the monitor back and minimizes the contract, opens up Microsoft Teams to check the availability of the loan specialist. Then starts the video with the loan specialist to walk the client through the contract face to face. You know, so this actually can be done with an additional device like a tablet, so both parties can you know fit in the frame easily yeah isaiah you know it's funny I, I went through a refi process myself very recently and that experience was very much like you described it um how do we envision this on the surface duo yeah so this is how we see that scenario playing out with surface duo so the banker can quickly pull up the account details on the left screen then navigate to the mortgage contract from that same screen on the right screen the banker can open up Microsoft Teams to check the availability of the loan specialist to bring into that engagement. The banker then switches to tent mode so both are able to be face to face with the loan specialist. Once the decision is made, the banker switches back to book mode for the final review of the contract on the left screen. And then finally, the customer signs on the right screen. Yeah, you know, Isaiah, that, that scenario, I could just see it, how beautifully it works here. Um, but one of the things that I think is also important is, you know, maybe being able to take notes as well. We saw that earlier in Jonathan's demo, um, so you could actually do that. But, you know, let's think about some other scenarios across some of the other organizations we work with. I know another area is insurance. I can only imagine, you know, an insurance agent having a, you know, a Surface Duo in their hand, what that would look like. You know, I'm a customer. Um, I just got into a car accident and, you know, now I'm calling my agent. Um, what happens next for that agent inside of that, you know, that's using that Surface Duo? Yeah, absolutely. So in this scenario, it starts with the insurance agent 
merchant receiving an inbound call from a client that was just involved in the accident. So after picking up the call in single screen mode, the agent switches to book mode to quickly jot down notes about the accident in OneNote, again, using the Surface Slim Pin. Now, uh, one quick thing to point out is that you actually don't need to use the Surface Slim Pin. You can use any pin that's in current circulation. Now, on the left screen, the agent can have the client's profile open so they can process the claim or gain insight into you know, the client's current standing. And again, the agent does all of this while staying in their flow. Once the agent has received all the necessary information, they then can travel to assess the damage of the vehicle. When assessing the, the vehicle, the agent uses a camera to snap pictures and videos of the damage. The agent then can show the customer the claim details in book mode on one screen, and on the other screen, gather signatures to immediately process the claim. So those are actually a few examples of how we see Surface Duo being the used to empower workers and deliver innovative and engaging experiences. However, if I'm being completely honest, as it is an extremely small scope of the breadth of what's possible with Surface Duo, particularly in financial services. So that really makes me incredibly excited to see how this session really inspires people to create their own experiences with their team members. Uh, Isaiah, you know, you captured it really well. And for Faison, I know you have a lead foot, so let's make sure you don't get into any accidents and have to pull your Surface Duo out. But uh, thanks, Jason and Isaiah. I'm really excited to hear and see these use cases. The possibilities are endless, and I look forward to seeing how the financial services organizations make this come to life for their customers as well. And speaking of creativity on their own, it's time, uh, it's a perfect time to pivot to Craig to talk about inspiration to create your own Surface Duo app experiences and take what's already existing and get it ported over. So Craig, thanks for joining us on the show today. Why don't you tell us about your day job? Because based on that profile and picture and accent, I see that your night job can possibly be a stunt double for Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah, that's a past Halloween shot of me as a Wolverine. Uh, it'd be great if it was on my badge, but sadly uh, it's not as good a photo. Uh, moving from Australia to the US was one of the big surprises, how much more seriously everyone took Halloween here. It's a lot of fun. Uh, my day job is actually what you said earlier, helping developers bring their apps to life on two screens. In particular, I like to help teams build out their cross-platform solutions. Craig, you know, we spoke to many of these out-of-the-box experiences, but our financial services customers can actually build their own experiences. Can you talk to us a little bit around what's possible for building these next generation solutions for financial services and what content is available for our financial services developers to start building that content? Absolutely. This is a great platform for bespoke app development. The two screens are great for, for forms, for charts and data display, for multitasking, you know, all the scenarios that we've touched on earlier today. As you know, the Surface Duo is an Android device and Google's made Android a great developer platform. We want developers to have the same great experience enhancing their apps. So we've got documentation, which you can see here on the slide, samples, custom controls, and more. Uh, so find everything we've got at aka.ms slash dual screen. We cover Java, Kotlin, .NET and C Sharp with Xamarin, React Native, Unity for gaming, Flutter, and of course the web. You can really use any tools that deploy to Android. Customers with WPF or UWP apps might want to check out Uno platform too. We also have a Surface Duo emulator for download. It runs on Windows, Mac and Linux and lets you test and debug from your favorite developer tools like Android Studio or Visual Studio. Uh, and for the website, Microsoft Edge supports dual screen CSS and JavaScript to enhance websites and progressive web apps. That isn't Microsoft specific, those are W3C proposed standards uh, that are going to support dual screen devices from Microsoft and other OEMs. Craig, I mean, you know, these dual postures are great. How are you making this easy for developers? And in other words, how can developers take advantage to build on Duo in a seamless manner? So when the device is flipped in a single screen, it feels just like a regular Android device. But when you open it up to two screens, that's obviously where it really shines. To help developers take their existing apps and enhance them for Surface Duo, we've worked on these five design patterns. You can get a sense of when your app has these types of interactions and then grab our SDKs and samples to help you implement. So just quickly, uh, the extended canvas, 
It's great for maps, but also for tables like Excel. List detail. Everyone knows apps like this. It's for navigating hierarchical data or using your Outlook, you know, list and, and emails. Two page view can be used for reading or for form filling. Uh, dual view, so it's the same kind of information on both screens. So one might be a chart and then you might have the, the table from the chart next to it. Uh, and companion pane is great for having a toolbox to the side of your, your working area uh, or for game controls. Uh, so people can use these as inspiration. And like I said, we've got code samples to help everyone get started with them. And it's going to be great to see how developers incorporate these into their apps. Greg, you know, these, these, this experience of kind of having dual screens is, you know, fairly new. And, you know, I love the fact that this developer experience, you know, really allows them to build, you know, new ways of working in new ways that financial services organizations can actually achieve, you know, maybe new types of apps. Mm -hmm. But some of these financial services customers already have apps. Um, and, you know, maybe want to move their current app into this kind of dual screen experience. What do these phases look like and how would they do that? Yeah, we absolutely recognize, you know, there's a ton of Android apps out there. They work great on the Surface Duo already, uh, but we'd love to see them being enhanced for, for dual screens. So we have these three steps that we like to talk about. The first one is just test your app, get it onto a Surface Duo or download our emulator and you know, see that it just works, but also get a feel for the device and how other apps work and understand you know, the benefits that two screens can bring. Step two is then you know, start making small incremental changes. You don't have to like blow everything out straight away, but doing things like implementing drag and drop, for example, makes your app just a good Android citizen. And it you know, really shines on the dual screens where you can just drag straight back and forth across the hinge. Uh, you can also make a really trivial change to open your activities on the other screen, which gives people a a good dual screen experience with really minimal effort. Uh, and then the third step is actually making incremental changes that uh, really enhance your app for two screens. So identifying and implementing some of the patterns that I just talked about uh, to get your app spanning, uh, using the left screen and the right screen differently or pushing the data, expanding over both screens. Um, so like I said, there's a couple of samples here on the screen, aka.ms slash dual screen to find our docs and samples. Uh, there's a lot there to get people started. Thank you, Craig. Um, Faison, Jonathan, Jason, Isaiah, you know, thank you all for sharing your perspectives and excitement around Surface Duo. I'm positive our viewers have learned a wealth of valuable information. So what we learned today is how the Surface portfolio is helping customers find the right device to meet their needs. With Surface Duo, we're really reimagining a new way to get things done. In addition to how our financial services customers can use this in real life business scenarios, while also understanding how they can get started building new applications to take advantage of these new dual screen experiences. If you're interested in starting this journey or in the middle of it and would like some guidance, please reach out to your account teams and we can schedule an envisioning session or follow up. Thanks again to all our great speakers. Um, in the interest of time, Edwin, let's quickly move to q and I know we've been answering some questions live already, but what are some of our viewers asking? You got it. Um, we got a question from Clive. You're the man, Clive. Um, you know, someone he was asking about what the specs of the camera are. Um, I don't think that was covered. So Faison, is that something you want to address? Yeah, I'd be happy to, Edwin. Um, so when you think about the Surface Duo, what's beautiful about the device is that hinge and what it gives you, but it also gives you the ability to kind of move the two screens as you need to. There's one camera on the device, and we call it an adaptive camera. It has one lens, but what it does is it works in two different ways. It's an 11 megapixel camera with, a, with an f-stop of 2.0. It has an 84 degree diagonal field of view, and it's optimized with AI for front and rear. What that means is when you're taking, let's say, a selfie, as an example, if there's a need to, of course, um, it optimizes for knowing that it's taking a front facing picture. And then you turn around the screen and the, the actual camera lens faces out and it optimizes for a real world picture. But not only is that interesting just because it's new tech and it's a different way of using a camera, but we also have optimized for video conferencing. So teams and Skype calls uh, for video conferencing up to 1080p at 30 frames per second, as long along with a flash to make sure that you can be seen really, really well. And you saw some of that scenarios when Jonathan was demoing it, but all of that comes together with a really great experience when you're using, again, a Surface Duo. Thanks, Faison. You know, it looks like we're out of time. We talked about a bunch of different topics here. Um, thanks everyone for joining live or joining via YouTube. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for FSI notifications by visiting aka.ms FSI Fridays. 
We're also open to your constructive feedback, so please send us your comments and suggestions at aka.ms forward slash FSI Fridays feedback. Be sure to catch all of the recordings on our YouTube channel where you can post follow-up questions um, if they weren't covered today. And don't for forget to subscribe and like uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this video and enjoy future videos as it relates to FSI Fridays. Um, Edwin, we are on to November. Why don't you give our audience a preview of what we have lined up next month? Most definitely. Uh, we're going to have an exciting November. On November 6th, we're going to have two topics. Matt Felton will discuss orchestrating a successful landing zone, where we'll focus on a recent customer success engagement performed for a banking customer, and the approach that was taken, and many benefits that have uh, been yielded. Brian Danicola discusses how we've worked with the financial global uh, corporations to deploy Azure Databricks as a foundation for their data platform as a service and that what they're going to plan to sell to clients. So we'll discover and cover the business value, technical approach, and obstacles that were needed to overcome. On November 13, Joe Carver will discuss the multitude of options around the uh, Azure Data Services catalog. Um, and finally, we'll have a fireside chat with our general manager, Shaka Rashid, and managing director, Mike Triolo, on real customer examples of how cloud computing is helping make organizations more agile and resilient, and why this is important, especially in a post-COVID world. You'll hear real examples on this in FSI and in parallel industries, as well as learn what's on the horizon of innovation in the cloud for financial services. You won't want to miss it. Thanks again and see you next time on FSI Fridays.